There's a new trend in fitness. It's called hybrid training, where an athlete wants to excel both at endurance and strength. And not just for performance or to look good, but also for health and longevity. In this video, I will explain you some of the signs on how to train optimally to excel both at endurance and strength. And I will reveal at the end a science-based weekly program that you can use for your hybrid training. Ready? Let's go straight into it. I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist uh, currently at ETH Zurich and I study since decades already the interaction between um, nutrients and physical activity. I've published dozens of peer-reviewed uh, papers and now I want to bring some of the science back to you guys. All right, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, what we have here is hybrid training. So it's kind of a, the, the definition of hybrid training means uh, a type of training that involves combining two or, or more different types of training, so endurance or strength, into one session or one training uh, bout, all right? So that's that's how people look at it. You can also call it uh, interference training or concurrent training. And you have to look at it from different perspective. It's always perspective is key. You can look at it from the, 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 the idea of a bodybuilder, a strong man. He or she wants to uh, become the better version of themselves by getting uh, the most amounts of strength, obviously. Right? But then you also have um, a cyclist. It can also do some kind of concurrent training, but their goal is not to become the strongest version, but rather the most conditioned version of themselves. And they will use strength, for example, to do some, some sprints and so forth. And then you have the hybrid athlete or the CrossFit athlete. You can look at it, Tia Claire Tomy, Hunter McIntyre in High Rocks, and so on. They want to be, excel uh, in both. Let's say the goal is maximal strength, not but potentially not hypertrophy, but also maximal cardiovascular capacity. All right, so that's how we are going to set up this video. And if you look at it from a more strength perspective, from a, from a, um, a strongman perspective, uh, clearly studies have shown that um, if you do concurrent training, you can see it here, uh, the blue line, um, there will be an earlier plateau of strength. So in this case, the persons uh, did, did uh, strength training um, and the concurrent group also did endurance training. And you can see that at a certain point, the strength keeps going, but when you have also a lot of more conditioning there, there will be a uh, plateau coming up. All right. So that is that is known and that is also something we see a lot in CrossFit athletes. I will get to that in a second. Um, if you look at it from a more uh, closer perspective, uh, we have muscle hi uh, fiber hypertrophy of the, the type 1 and the type 2 fibers. We, as we know, the type 1 fibers are the slowly contracting uh, fatigue resistance muscle fibers. And you also have the, the fast twitch fibers, as you can see here, the white muscle fibers. And um, if you have a group that does concurrent training, so strength plus the endurance part of training, you see that um, actually there is a, a reduced effect on strength development or uh, cross-sectional area development. There's also a lot of paper showing uh, strength development as well. Okay, so this is actually an overview of several studies. And here you see this diamond. That means that there is um, an, an effect of uh, resistance training, meaning if you do resistance training, you have a higher chance of building muscle mass than when you would not do any endurance type activity uh, thereby. So that is quite clear and also makes sense, obviously. You specialize in what you uh, become. But then there are some tricks, obviously, to try to counteract this. And here uh, is, is the interesting part. So here you see that if you do concurrent training with cycling, so non-weight-bearing activities, you see actually that there is a very small effect on um yeah, the concurrent effect is very small. So you see here, there's uh, actually almost no effect sizes or there's no effect of the extra extra uh, cycling. But if you do weight bearing, so where you have an impact on the muscles and on the joints, then you do see a strong or, or at least a, a stronger uh, concurrent effect. And that is something to take into account when you uh, design your training and your training plan. That's also what we're going to see at a later stage. So a conclusion for a strongman, so someone who wants to build as mus mu much muscle mass as possible, um, the goal will be to limit the cardio, 
to a sustainable pace where you have uh, some health effects because only doing resistance training your whole life is probably not the healthiest thing to do. Um, you also want to incorporate some cardio, but not too much and little volume because there will be an interference effect here. But then look at it from a different perspective, rather from a person who wants to improve their cardiovascular capacity. And here you see uh, three different groups, a strength group that only does strength, then endurance group and a concurrent group. And here you have different parameters of, of hypertrophy strength, but also VO2 max, which is an endurance parameter. And here you can see, and that's the interesting part, if you do endurance and concurrent, there is a same effect on VO2 max development. And that's very important. Right. So um, in this case, the people here, mostly untrained people uh, have to say this um, when they incorporated also initial an additional part uh, or strength part into their training, they actually did not um, hamper their development in VO2 max. Obviously, strength is slightly, you see here, lower body hypertrophy. The concurrent group uh, has a lower effect on strength. And obviously, the endurance group has very little uh, endurance, uh, sorry, strength development or uh, hypertrophy development. Good. So that's, um, that's an important one, I would say. So conclusion of the cyclist, I didn't incorporate some other data because I don't want to make this video too long, but there is some data that um, uh, extra strength training for cyclists or for running can actually improve their mechanical efficiency. So they require less oxygen for the same amount of speed. All right. So for the same amount of work. So that's why some of the, the cyclists actually do incorporate um yeah, do incorporate strength training into their into their training and it will likely not have a large effect on their VO2 max. Again, certainly when the volume of strength training is not super high. But then we have the hybrid athletes and that's maybe the main part of this video. Um, but I always think about if you have an elite CrossFit athlete or a Hyrox athlete or, or any athlete that does a lot of um, yeah, hybrid training, um, there is just no way that they can incorporate that much volume as an endurance training person like an endurance athlete would do or a strength athlete would do you see so for example this is a typical uh, I, this is just just uh, hypothetical six to ten hours a week would be endurance for a crossfit athlete for example zone two training uh, workouts and so on then would be a mixed training where you do typical five rounds for time of burpees and snatches so that's kind of crossfit training and then you also have pure strength training where they do back squats and deadlifts all right so as i said the inability to train the amount of volume that is needed to make it to the top level in any type of sport endurance or strength is just not possible or not reachable for a hybrid athlete so there will be some kind of interference here um, so look at let, how to how to break that interference or how to try to limit that uh, interference here I have a very interesting study in rugby athletes so rugby uh, is, is kind of a hybrid sport they need a lot of muscle mass but they also uh, need some some endurance uh, and, and, and some conditioning capacity obviously Good. So how was this st st uh, study set up? There were five groups of eight to ten uh, people. So real athletes. I mean, they were um, reasonably well trained. They were from from uh, some competition in in France. So they were not novice uh, not novice beginners athletes. All right. We had a control group. We had a strength only group. I will explain you in a second what the strength was. Then we had a concurrent group um, that had different recovery uh, periods. So what they did for for the for the concurrent training, so the the the, the hybrid training, was first a strength part immediately six hours or 24 hours followed by a conditioning part which consisted of, of sprints i will show you in a second so here is uh, just some 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 data on the groups there were uh, 10 even more uh, 10 to 15 people per group and they were some decent athletes right there were 88 kilos and in quite large athletes so something comparable as um, a hybrid athlete in the crossfit or high rocks uh, sport what did they do? So the strength, as I said, was a typical strength where they did low repetitions but high velocity and high weight. Okay, so they did bench press, um, bench row, and they also did half squats and um, leg press. So, so typical strength exercises, and also there was a progressive overload over several weeks, so seven weeks. And then the aerobic training was, for them, aerobic. It was 15 seconds of interval training and 15 seconds of rest on the field. And as I said, there were three groups. Once they did the aerobic training straight after the, the uh, strength training, once they did it 15, sorry, six hours after the strength training, and once they did it the full day, so 24 hours after strength training.
And here is super interesting the data. You can see here the effect on strength. So they did obviously pre and post tests of, 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 of bench press and also half squat. And uh, just just bear with me here you see the the control group they didn't improve uh, any 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 strength obviously they didn't train and then you also have um, the the strength group so the top group they only did strength so yes they improved their strength quite uh, substantially and then you see here the concurrent groups and if you have um, six hours or 24 hours of rest between your strength and your endurance part you actually have the same effects than doing strength only only when there was right after training also strength training also conditioning so right after then there was actually an interference effect where there was a less increase in in strength the same picture was there for uh, so bench press and also half squat you see here this is not significant this means that there is an effect you do improve but there's a to a lesser extent very important i think for crossfit athletes this then look at endurance parameters, VO2 max, VO2 max. If you only do strength or don't do any training at all, obviously there's no improvement in VO2 max. If you wait 24 hours after your strength training, doing the conditioning, as I said, you can improve your um, VO2 max or your conditioning, basically. If you wait zero or six hours, uh, there is an improvement, but to a lesser extent. Good, so here, the people, you have to think about, they did a, the exact same amount or volume of training in the concurrent groups. The only difference was the time they rested in between the sessions. We uh, did a similar study on this in CrossFit uh, athletes. I mean, not a, a similar studies, but we also looked at the physiological uh, profile of um, male and female elite CrossFit athletes, top 5% of the CrossFit Open, as well as semi-finalists and, uh, and games athletes. All right. So here, this is a study that that will be published shortly in in, in a journal. I will I will uh, put the um, the link to this study in the description below, so you can read it as well. And what we see here is also an interference effect. So um, just uh, to to have a little bit of 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 of, of data on on, on this, um, we tested them in the lab, so elite CrossFit athletes, and we did basic strength tests, or for example, a high jump or a maximal contraction on the machine. And then we, uh, and also a VO2 max test, uh, an endurance test, right? So strength and endurance were tested. And then we compared that to reported data on elite cyclists for endurance and elite weightlifters for strength. And you can see here that in the males, these are the males, you see that there is um, a, the, the CrossFit athletes have almost the same amount of uh, strength measured in the lab, a little bit less uh, than elite weightlifters. But the major, let's say, uh, concurrent or, or interference effect was here in the endurance parameters. So that around 75% of elite athletes. So much, much less. All right. So certainly for you to max in critical power. Um, if we look for the females, we see actually across the board um, just a lower percentage than their, uh, let's say, elite counterparts, weightlifters and endurance athletes. So if you have a CrossFit athlete that, that trains, let's say, 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week, pure, always concurrent interference uh, training, you do see that maximal strength and maximal endurance, certainly endurance, is hampered in these athletes compared to um, uh, pure yeah, specialists. So, conclusion for a, for a hybrid athlete, most likely there's an interference effect once the athlete reaches a certain level, and that's key. In the beginning, concurrent training will improve both strength and endurance, but once the athlete reaches a certain level and the plateau phases are uh, pulling up, you will need uh, to specialize to become better in, in one side of the training program. A performance deficit with specialized sports will uh, further decrease uh, with, with, with time, obviously. Accept interference effect, but extremes uh, can, be, uh, can be trained uh, simultaneously. So you can train them simultaneously, you can keep improving, but there will be a point where uh, yeah, the interference effect kicks in, as shown by our previous uh, CrossFit study. Avoid weight-bearing cardio, so that's important. So if you want to avoid it, um, the interference effect as much as possible, don't run too much straight after your strength session, 
okay? And if you can, rest six hours or more between your endurance and strength or vice versa. This is key. If you can do this, this would, in theory, at least according to science, decrease your interference effects. It's because the molecular pathways are actually interfering between strength and endurance. All right, so let's look at a typical weekly training program that can be made or can be followed for hybrid training. Good. So I uh, have uh, different days here. I have the Monday, Tuesday and so on and until, until Sunday, so seven days a week. And I listed them how you could train. So in the morning and in the afternoon. So if you are an elite athlete or someone who's really into hybrid training, the best what you can do is splitting your sessions. That's for sure. For example, uh, zone two on the rower in the morning. So that's two times 25 minutes at 75% uh, of FTP. And then you do your strength session. All right. Then the next day you do only interval running, for example, four times four minutes at zone four with speed at two minute rest. And then uh, you rest in the afternoon. The next day, so you have two hard days, one full rest day. Thursday, you go again, zone two training, so long, easy training. Zone two is, is, is a training uh, type that would increase your mitochondrial volume, so more mitochondrial uh, volume because of this, this training, as well as um, deadlifting uh, five times five and three times uh, 12. This is just a random number, obviously, uh, in the afternoon. This depends on how your trainability. Uh, and then you can also do an upper body uh, superset uh, again in the afternoon. So after your uh, zone two training, six hours in between with a, with a nice lunch in between. And then uh, Friday morning, you can do a super hard, intense, again, interval session, six times 30 seconds all out with a lot of rest in between, uh, for example, on the air bike. And then you do upper body uh, superset supersets in the afternoon good and then again a full rest day and then you go again for for example a more fun day where you do a one long run in the morning and in the afternoon you do a mixed modality training a crossfit workout so i will link um this plan into the description so you can can have a look uh, and you can also play with it for example i added and that is something that maybe not many people do i added the the training uh, target rp so rate of perceived exertion four eight six this is out of ten you can also put it out of twenty which type of training it is endurance of strength also crossfit and then the training time and then you have the trim which is a training impulse, that's a load, the load you will put on your body. This is dependent, obviously, on um, your, your length of training as well as uh, the target RPE. So even though it could be a very long training, doesn't mean that the load on your body is, is very high. Actually, a very intense but very short training can have a hard, or larger load on, on your body. Good. So that's um, that's that's that. And then you can have a nice little graph here for your weekly training impulse. So you can see how your load fluctuates throughout the week. Again, I will link it. You can you can play with it yourself. Uh, it's all for free. So I, I hope uh, you like it. All right. That was it. Uh, leave a like if you like this type of, of content. We really appreciate it. And also the algorithm likes us to push out this video more. Some kind of evidence based information about hybrid training. Stay fit, stay healthy, and see you in the next one. Ciao.